Hi, welcome back. Still on SQL Server Windows failover clustering and SQL Server always on availability groups. We are going to continue from where we left off in the previous video. But I do have some assumptions and here are they. So first of all, I'll assume that you already have your Windows, your, your domain controller configured and you have joined all of your computers to the domain controller because without that you wouldn't be able to proceed in what we're about to do in this session and after that uh, after this too has been done by you we will install uh, Windows Server failover clustering and we will do standalone SQL Server installation before we can then implement always on availability groups so I have made a, a standalone SQL Server installation uh, video series before so you're gonna use that video and use the concept the same things that we did there to do standalone installation here but before we go ahead to do standalone installation you have to fulfill this too which is have your DC join the computer to the DC and implement this Windows Server failover clustering and that's what we're gonna start with in this video so going forward in this session what we will do is I'll first of all show you how to use MSTSC to connect to your servers remotely I'll tell you more on that shortly and we will install Windows failover cluster feature on all the servers the primary and secondary servers and then restart the servers so that's basically what this video uh, particular session is all about I have a um, couple of servers so this is my domain controller right here this is uh, the primary server this is the secondary server and here is the file share server so it's just uh, a regular server that's basically going to serve the purpose of a file share where uh, these two servers will have access to the folder that we designate as the file share so we'll see that in a in a, in a moment but I don't want us to connect to these servers directly like you know we've been doing because no one will give you access to VMware to connect directly to servers from VMware at work uh, you may not be using the sysadmin guys may not actually be using VMware I think what they will be using will be if they're using VMware technologies it will be VMS VMNX something different uh, can't remember but um, if you have the opportunity to see the console it's still VMware product but it's not going to be VMware player or workstation it will be something different which is used in enterprise but they get but again you wouldn't be connecting directly to your servers from there what you would be using is remote desktop so some people call it RDC some people call it RDP it doesn't matter it's the same uh, tool and here it is remote desktop connection so by just typing R it comes up in my own, on my own computer but to get the uh, if it doesn't come up like that the short abbreviation for it is MSTSC I don't know why they've used MSTSC because it doesn't suggest remote desktop but if you're interested to know why you can google it and uh, find out yourself but again what I would like to do is bring up this remote desktop and basically type the name of my server and in, in the case of primary I should be able to just type primary and hit connect and that should go but unfortunately this is not going to happen because there are things we have to do so that's what I intend to show you as you can see uh, that's come back with an error but we'll fix that in a minute uh, and again what I'm about to show you you may not have to do this at work because uh, your computer would already be part of the domain all right so your laptop or the virtual desktop that you're given so there's something called VDI so you may actually be using VDI which is a, a virtual desktop so whatever tool you've been given 
that you'll be using to access the service will ideally be part of the the domain so you may not have to do what I'm about to show you but because this is home configuration uh, I have to do that so that I can simulate the real world right so at work you can basically just bring up remote desktop type the name of the server and off you go right but if it doesn't work that way then you can consider what I'm about to show you so there's a file called called host file as you can see in this directory you can see there are a couple of files here uh, forget about all these ones this is what we're particularly interested in but you might wonder how did I get here so I'll just walk you through so if you go to the C drive let me actually go here so if you go from the C drive from your Windows C drive you look for Windows look for system 32 so within Windows folder you would see system 32 open that up all right and then look for drivers open drivers and look for etc open up etc and there we go this is the file right here you need to take note of something if you open this file and you can open it with any notepad all right so let me open it with notepad plus plus for example this is the content of the file uh, in your own case you may not have this because this is something that i've had to put in manually myself so you would basically have something like this right okay so what you need to do is you need to add some entries in here but you can't add it directly like this because if you do let's say for example I've made some changes uh, you know forget about this entry that I've written, written but I've made some changes and I'm trying to save this now if I do save and hit that and hit enter you'll see that In this case, actually, it, it kind of worked, but it's probably because it's using uh, I'm using a uh, Notepad. Let's let's actually use open it with a uh, Notepad, no more Notepad. I used Notepad plus plus, but yeah, that that that's a good thing that that works. But let's let me show you what I was trying to uh, show you just now. So this is the normal Notepad file. Actually, it didn't even save, but um, okay, let's do it again entry so I'm just typing entry there and I'll hit save save so it comes up uh, asking me where do I want to save it and if I now ask it to save it and then replace it saying yes you can see this is the error I was trying to reproduce it says access is denied so it's not gonna allow you to save this file right so the solution will be first of all to open notepad in an elevated mode so rather than hitting on notepad like that right click and run as administrator and that opens up in my other uh, monitor what I need to now do is I can then copy the content from before and paste it into this elevated notepad that I just opened so what we need to do basically is to specify the name of the server primary secondary these are the two servers and also file share if we really need to uh, file share underscore server so in front of each of them we we'll just put their IP addresses so let's figure out what the IP addresses are for this server if you notice I have actually destroyed the previous uh, domain controller uh, 
implemented in all. But there's there's no changes. It's uh, everything remains the same. It's the same concept that you already know. So let's quickly get the IP address. So the IP address is 192.168.1.130. I'll just copy and paste this. So this is for the primary, let's get for the secondary as well. Okay, I've actually gotten it. Uh, to save time, I've had to pause and start the video. So these are the correct IP addresses. So for primary is 130, secondary is 132, and file share, actually, the name of the file share server is just file share, 134. So these are other servers that I have in my environment. You can see the name of this one is prod1, the IP address, you know, so basically this, so no matter how many servers you have, uh, within your network, you can basically put the uh, DNS name of the server, or the host name, and then the IP address. Now we can then save this file in the etc directory and overwrite the ho existing host file. See, if you want to place, yes, and that worked. So we can now close this minimize all of this and try to connect using and try to connect using the remote desktop so I'm going to have to provide the password now trying to secure remote connection and there we go now in your own case you may have a bit of pro problem uh, getting this work the first time so I'm going to tell you just a brief things that you need to watch out for so uh, under using MSDSC so first thing you, you want to make sure that the firewall on your servers are turned off I've shown you how to do this before so there's no point going back and forth if you want to know how to do that you need to go through the whole video series on uh, setting up your domain controller and joining the server to the domain controller so ensure that the firewall is turned off then enable allow remote access Okay, so let me quickly show you how to do that. So once you're in your server, you can basically look for control panel. And just type in remote in the search bar here. And you'll see this on the system, allow remote access to your computer. And if it is, if you, in your case, if this is what's been uh, selected. You need to select this one. Allow remote connection to this computer. So obviously before you can do this, you need to probably go into your uh, VMware, connect here, do all of this before you can get this remote connection working. All right, and one more thing, you want to make sure that you're using breached network 
network for all your servers from the domain controller to the primary secondary and all, all of them so in my case I haven't enabled it for the primary so I'll just do that to show you so if you click on player here and go to manage go to virtual machine settings you'd see network adapter what you want is breached hit OK and that should do it so if I, if I try to if I right click on remote desktop and click on remote desktop and try to connect to the secondary this time you can see it comes up but the default user that shows up here is not what I want so I'm just gonna click on more choices use a different account and I can say what I want is x.0 backslash so in my case this is what the um, the domain controller uh, name is so you need to figure out which one yours is I, I can show you how to get that in a minute so in my case is x.0 backslash secondary underscore sql admin and I'll specify the password remember me okay and there we go so I've taken over the session so if you wanted to know where where the actually we can check from here so if you wanted to know your okay your domain so you can either use the fully qualified name like this secondary dot internal that I have here so let's actually try that and see if that works I'm gonna sign out and try to connect again uh, actually it has saved my connection So let me clear this out. So secondary dot x point dot internal. okay that doesn't work let me figure out what the problem is right okay I know what the problem is you can literally just put the computer name which is secondary and given the let's have a look again it's a little small but given the fact that the full computer name is secondary dot x point dot internal so you could just say x point backslash yeah so what what you need to focus on basically is when you when you right click on this PC and go to properties you see this full computer name right here I hope you can see it this is really tiny but secondary dots x point dot internal so the full name is the name of the computer which is secondary x point which is the domain controller name dot internal which is the extension so you want the one in the middle which is the uh, domain name x point so that works for me x point zero also works because it's just some extra configuration that I've done but you can ignore that that um, that's fine if you hit on enter that should work and just specify your password and that should take us straight into the server so now that we have access to both of our servers ok 
can place them side by side. Let's minimize this. So it can be easy for us to work with. If you if you have a pretty pretty big screen, you can multitask with this kind of thing. So yeah, here we go. So first thing done, which is um, connecting through MSDSE. The next thing is to install Windows Failover Cluster feature on uh, all of the servers that we want to use in this deployment, which in our case will be primary and secondary. If you have multiple secondaries, you would have to do this on all the secondaries. So I'm just gonna show you how to do one and um, you can do the rest yourself. So what you need is the server manager. Uh, let me close it and show you where it is in case you don't have it open already. So this is the icon, you would see it down here. No, no, no that's for partial. So this one is, is the server manager icon. So you go, if you click on that, server manager comes up and add roles and features. What you're looking for, just click next, next. You're looking for failover clustering. Let's go to the next. Uh, I'd imagine you have this uh, .NET framework installed already from the from the standalone uh, from when we were uh, configuring the domain controller and joining to DC, uh, all this would have been done already. So if I check any other thing, you can ignore it because this is a brand new server for me. So that's why I may have to. But the major thing we're looking for is the fillable cluster feature. Okay, there you go. So that's it, fillable clustering. Add features, hit on next. So hit on restart if need be and install. All right, so that has failed. If you run into an error like this, the workaround for that will have to go and do that in VMware. So let's go to primary and we need to go to the settings for the server. If you go to the network adapter, now we need to add one more adapter. So just hit add there. Go to network adapter, hit next. This time we're not going to use bridged, we're going to use NAT. Now the reason this failed is because it couldn't access the internet to download the packages and install the features that we wanted to install. So that's why it's failed. And to prove that, if I go to command prompt and try to ping Google, ping google.com, you would see that it's unable to access Google. So that that's what will happen if you go to your browser and try to go to Google, you won't be able to access it. As you can see, could not find the host google.com. So what we need to do is add this NAT so it can use our host IP address to access the internet because what we currently have is internal IP addresses uh, so we need uh, an IP address that will have an internet gateway gateway basically so finish and okay so this will now save the virtual machine state and if we go back here going to disconnect for a few seconds and come back up. Our server is back and if you try to bring Google now you can see it's returning back to us. So we can now close this out and start again. I've had to um, ensure that problem shows so you can see how to fix it. That was intentional by the way. Fill of our clustering. 
restart if need be install and now the installation should go successfully and there we go it's now complete so you can carry on do this to your secondaries if you have one second secondary or if you have more than one secondary you have to do this um, all the secondaries and that this is where we're going to end this particular video see you in the next video as we continue with our deployment